Rebecca. So go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself and introduce yourself. Sure. My name is Rebecca Height. Um, it's actually Rebecca Height Stitt is my legal name, but my stage name and performing name is my maiden name, which is Rebecca Height. I'm a self-published author of an acceptance series. I have won five awards with book one and book two. I'm about to complete book three, and there will be a fourth as well. And I also do author signings around the Philadelphia area. Sometimes I like to travel different states. And I also have um, an audio book coming out at the end of the year as well. I'm also, uh, I also have an LLC. I'm a CEO of BH Creations, which is um, art that I sell that I make from acrylic, spray paint, oil, and watercolor. So it's a variety of different kinds of art. Awesome. So you've got, you're multi-talented, not just a, uh, just an author, but also painting and doing artwork like that. Yes. Yeah. I like to, um, so because I'm neurodivergent and ADHD, I find that if I get stuck on one task and, you know, that task frustrates me like writer's block or I have to make a decision about a plot in the story and I'm not ready to commit to it. Being able to switch back and forth actually not only helps my creativity in two different forms or multiple forms, because I like to branch out like into music, guitar, piano as well. So, I mean, it definitely helps keep my creativity alive um, and my ADHD happy. <laughs> got to gotta keep just moving. That way you, get, you don't get stuck on one subject. You can go to another subject and do something with that, right? Yes, that is absolutely correct. Yeah. There are quite a few times when I would be working on a piece of art and I like know it means something more in it, but honestly, I can't, my brain can't think of what it's going to be. So I literally want to throw it in the trash or light it on fire. Like I've, I've tried to almost do that a couple of times. And so what I'll do is sometimes throw paint at a canvas or a piece of paper just to get ideas. Um, but sometimes I'll sit on a, a painting for four or five months just until the idea of how I'm going to complete it comes to me. And that's happened probably four or five times. So do you ever, so you're stepping away, you're using, do you want other things? Do you ever go back to like writing and you write for a little bit and then you come back to that painting and you're like, wait a minute, <laughs> maybe it needs this. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So there was a painting that I had uh, that came out really, really cool. And it sometimes it's by accident. Honestly, I used acrylic. It was um, around Christmas last year, I think. It was like a red and a green, and I had a heating gun, and I was trying to, again, patient for paint to dry. So I was heating it, and it did this really cool thing where it crinkled up, and it was like, great, it was great. And it looked fantastic, and the paint moved and stuff, but I didn't know what to put on it, and I was like, I didn't want to mess it up. But, you know, when you make something glorious by accident, you really don't want to keep working on it almost. So you mess it up and you can't re you can't make identical. I can try to, but it won't be identical ever. So um, I branched off into stencils and then spray painting almost six, seven months later. And I was like, I know what I want to do now. And I like did it. And it, people love this painting. Like it's one of their favorites, actually. That's that's really cool. So you were just messing around with the heat gun and it just caused the paints to, to change in a different ways. Let me ask you this, that uh, you, you mentioned the, the publishing and you met the books that you've self-published as well as the paintings. Which one do you think you find more enjoyment with and which one do you think you spend more time on? That's that is definitely a hard question because they definitely both one's a visual like it's actually because it's painting. So it's an actual visual. But sometimes, you know, like you can make a painting and people it's about perspective. And they might not see what you're trying to do. And at times it can frustrate me because I feel so strongly about what it, I turned that painting into. And not everyone sees it. But, you know, that's free will. That's human nature. So with the writing, I could write out exactly how I feel and visualize it. So they complement each other. But they definitely can't do the same thing as each other, if that makes sense. I can't unless I make a movie of my book. You can't see what I'm writing and what I see when I write it. Um, my art, but minus the wait time sometimes for the months, but like actually doing the painting um, doesn't take me too long, which is surprising. I think that when I was actively painting 
constantly. The longest was five days, but I can sometimes push something out in like an hour, 45 minutes, depending, because I see it in my mind. I see the colors and I see the picture in my mind. And so my hands know what to do. And then I'll add to it based off of different ideas. So the longest thing that takes me is the writing for sure, because you're building a world uh, that mostly doesn't exist. I write fi fiction, fantasy, contemporary uh, books. That means that it's modern day. It has like, so I, I based it in Stockholm, Sweden, mostly in Sweden. And I use things from their culture um, because I want to do it justice and uh, some locations around their, their big locations. But I make fake people. I make a fake community. I make fake interactions. Um, so it, it you have to build like you have to do the real things and the real life justice but you also have to do your characters justice as well and that takes time sometimes and the, the characters sometimes don't do what you want them to do sometimes they're just like i'm gonna go off and do this other thing but my plot was like you need to go into the forest and they're like i'm not gonna do that <laughs> Yeah, well, and that can be a way to build suspense then, you know, you can you can turn it into the, okay, the character's not doing what I want them to do, but I'll make it that the, that they know they need to go to the forest in order to resolve <laughs> that, right? <laughs> yeah, so it's like, it turns, so originally when I had the idea for the book series, it was going to be two books, and then it just, like, exploded into four, because honestly, um, there is, even though I put pressure on myself to get the story done, I want people to read it. I want the readers to read it and feel and experience what, what these characters are going through because I, I believe in it so much. And it's hard for me not to rush the story because I know it from beginning to end. It's just the middle scenes and the, and the like in-between plots that I really have to think about. Does it make sense? Is there a hole somewhere? Am I going to mess this up later? Does it? Like, I have to think of that moment and then book four, can I somehow still loop around to everything I explained in the first three books and it makes sense for book four. So for me, I think not only for one book, I think all the books does it make sense. And that's an entire process. <laughs> yeah. So so what are your what are your books about? What's your series about that you're writing? So my book series is about um, Selena Wilson is her name. Uh, she has. So it's magic, it's based off of magic, but you don't quite know that in book one, not until later. So it's um, based off of her having glowing eyes and unusual strengths. She doesn't completely know why. Her parents uh, passed away when she was younger. She doesn't really remember them. She was raised by someone who she knew as her uncle. And then um, people were looking for her and she didn't know. And so when they find her, of course, as everything explodes into you know, the world, that's what happens to her. She finds this community she never knew about, but it was for her safety. And then um, she leads them into a rebellion against people that were oppressing um, their community. And so it's elemental magic. So it's, it's fire, it's rain, it's storms, it's a telekinesis, like it's a whole, like air, like it's all the things. I had to Google I had to Google all of the elements of like different mythologies so they wouldn't just be the four, earth, air, fire, water. I was like, there's more than that. So I really had to dig into that. And so she also with that has to, um, she also has to learn how to be herself, how she was raised to be, but also adapt to this new world and this new leadership role in her life. And how, you know, falling in love, betrayal, um, learning secrets about her and her family and growing. But how do you do that when uh, negative things happen in life? There's nothing straight and narrow about life, you know. So so the story, this it's called the acceptance series because she has to accept how to adapt her life and who she is to doing what her destiny is and still be OK. Okay, that sounds really interesting and engaging. Um, what have been some of the hardest parts for you with writing? I mean, you talked a little bit about it with, you know, sometimes you need to step away, but what are some of the hardest parts with writing in particular that you, you've you kind of struggled with? Um, 
sometimes I know what I want to say, but I don't know how to say it. So I have a unique way of thinking and speaking that it's like there's something better out there. To, there's a better way to say it. And I rely on my editor <laughs> a lot for that kind of thing. Um, and I also get over excited about a scene and it might not make sense. So I have to circle back and change it. Um, I usually read my book two or three times, if not more. And sometimes when I'm rereading it, I'm like, what is this? <laughs> what, did, what is this? What did I just put down on paper? <laughs> <laughs> so like, so the first draft is always how you think and how you talk, write the story out. And then you go back, you reread it, and you say, okay, what am I really trying to say in this? So what am I trying to do? What's the point of this? And then you sort of modify it and cut sentences out because they're too much. Um, this might come as no surprise. I like run on sentences. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I mean, don't we all? Don't we all? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're like adjective, comma, colon. <laughs> <laughs> totally makes sense. I'll I'll find that later. I'll I'll fix that later, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know. I'm all like, and I think I'm being so slick sometimes, and I'm like, I'm not being slick at all. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm so smart. You're like, no, no, you're not. <laughs> yeah. I really love this story so much. It it means so much to me. I so I personally um, have gone through a lot of personal growth in the last three years, and I use this story as a means to help me do it. Um, from grief, there's a lot of talking about grief in there, but it's not just losing a family member. It's talking about um, losing something that's uh, your home, like your childhood home, having grief on leaving that, or you know, someone you fell in love with but they betrayed you. You know, there's grief with that, obviously. And it's it's like grief for your old self as you're becoming a new self, but you're also proud of who you're becoming. Like it's it encompasses so much. Because that was it for me. And every time I lost someone in my life, my father, my stepfather, family members, um, I would use this book to help me um, express and, and explore what that is. So I talk about accepting an emotion, accepting grief. What does that mean? How does that change your life? And I talk about natural, like a lot of nature. Uh, tree of life comes up is going to be a huge factor. We talk about the ocean and plants and and I like combine the expectancy of of a person's life with nature and how we have to you know ac accept that it will end at some point but also there's so much beauty in it okay and you said you did a lot of research for the for your series um, using different mythologies and things like that so where did you draw a lot of the inspiration for the magic and the rules? And uh, you mentioned the tree of life and things like that. Where did you draw all that from? Um, I always liked mythology growing up. I was a big fan of Xena and, <laughs> and Buffy, the vampire slayer. And, um, you know, the Lost Girl was is a Canadian show uh, that Emily Andrus was on. And she also did Winona Earp which is more recent. And then Warrior Nun, I'm a huge fan of Warrior Nun as well. So, I mean, through my life, even when I was a child, I was surrounded by culture and TV culture that um, was was very contemporary. I mean, Xena wasn't very, like, mo like it wasn't modern day. It was obviously, you know, back in the day with the Amazons and mythology and stuff. But there's something captivating about it. And the more that I watched them, I started reading more books and, like, per Percy Jackson, you know, the movies, and it just sort of grows on you, and you realize there's some kind of coalition between life and then these stories, because if you think about it, you know, life can be very difficult, it can be very hard, and these stories and movies and TV shows and music, um, they're in a way our therapy, like they're a way to help us deal with all the things that we just haven't been told or know how to. And I think I just sort of grasped onto that because there was uh, my parents were divorced very young, and I, I think I lacked some direction sometimes, not on a failure on their part, but um, I just so that helped guide me a little bit, if that makes sense. 
gave you something to focus on when you were having rough times is looking at the these stories. I, I can definitely understand that and relate to that. I think most people can. Um, so you drew you you mentioned the magics. You said said a couple of different forms of magics. What are the the elemental magics that you did finally settle on for the book? It, so I I did a lot a lot of research on what happened. I don't know why I researched so much. I want I guess because no one knows. So I researched like if if someone with storm abilities fought someone with fire what happened like i literally googled i was like i know glass comes from sand and fire that's how glass is made and so like i really really dove into it so spoiler alert um the community is nymphs so i researched a lot of different roman mythology greek mythology um anything norse related what are the abilities for the nymphs and what do they stand for and what do they do and and i really dug into that so i because we live on earth and we have so much nature around us it was very important to me that i include literally as much as humanly possible with that or if it didn't exist i had to make sure it made sense for the world so like i had one person um she can it's the it's an aversion like mind control, but it's not because she's working with your energy. So like that was really gray area. And I was like, how do I make this fit? But you really have to um, like, I really tried my best to do justice to the stories and different cultures. And um, <laughs> I really like, if they're both earth, one is vines, one is actual mud and earth and dirt but they're in the same category but they're completely different like i really dug in there <laughs> you got you got different subsets maybe maybe they um i mean i could see that being like people 20 30 years from now reading your book and some professor going well this guy's uh mud and dirt because it's a ground more grounded character whereas the yeah. other guy is vines he's reaching for something you know the yeah. the psychological aspects that they always analyze uh, one of my favorite jokes that I saw on Facebook on one of the writers' pages was uh, uh, what what art or what writing te instructors or teachers think they meant by the blue curtains, <laughs> <laughs> and then in reality you're like it was just blue curtains. I just it wrote was just blue it was blue curtains. <laughs> yeah. Don't read too that much into it. <laughs> yeah, you're like you're digging way too far. But to be fair, and I did inadvertently some of their names and their characteristics fit their abilities and i i did that sort of on purpose and sort of not at the same time because in the theory that nymphs like came from certain areas so they come from all over and i didn't specifically say where the community came from i was vague for a reason because i wanted that to be up to the reader but like the water community the people that are dealing with water they're in the same general area and like the dirt you know like they're it goes based off of where they live so they're more um with mountains and caves and stuff but again i didn't specify where but you're absolutely correct i, I did that on purpose <laughs> <laughs> so do you find a correlation at all <clears throat> from your creative sources between your book series and uh, any of the art that you do, how how you how your inspirations come and things like that. Hmm. So a lot of my inspiration can stem from music. Okay. So industrial, not industrial. Well, I mean yes, industrial, but instrumental is what I'm trying to say. Instrumental music. So when I hear certain songs and it fits my mood, I can like envision like a scene with it and if the scene doesn't make sense for the book then i usually adapt it to a piece of art so for example in my writings there really isn't any biking but i really had this strong sense to do something biking and i uh, for the passing of my father i ended up doing a memorial viking boat in oil on a like a rainbow river like as a dedication to him like that was nowhere close to my book and i was just like yes this is what i'm gonna do sometimes it just comes to me sometimes i'm just like 
I'm, I'm writing and I see something I want to really paint, but I can't do both at the same time. Like I can only do one or the other. So I have to choose. <laughs> I've I've had the issue when I was working on one thing and I had a thought for another project that I was working on and I'm like, well now I got to choose which one of these is going to go yeah. because I realize I'm probably not going to remember that <laughs> that yeah. thought in about ten minutes. <laughs> That's a real thing. That's such a real thing. Such a real thing. So I was in the middle of book two and I went to a what was that metaphysical fair in New York. And they had like little crystal, um, crystal dragon heads. And there was one I, that was sort of damaged, but in a way that I absolutely fell in love with. And it was like a yellow and this beautiful red. And I was like, this can be a story. And I was like, I am literally writing book two. I don't have time for this. And I was like, and I made this like, I started building this entire world on this paladin and this dragon. And I was like, I don't have time for this. I don't I have can't write that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I was like, it, my brain was going and I was like, it, became, it was building a whole story. And I was like, I'm literally at a fair and I don't like, I, I have to tell the story I'm doing now and then I can tell it. <laughs> then you can come back to that. Yeah. That'd yeah be cool. I get, I, I definitely understand that. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's definitely. Uh, a struggle when you've got multiple pieces that you're working on. Yeah, it, sometimes you need to step away from one to get inspiration, and then you move on to something else, and then you're sitting there and you're like, wait a minute, I've got another thought for another <laughs> piece over here. <laughs> That's true. And I'm sorry, notepads just, notepads only work so much, so well, right? <laughs> I know, right? Like, I can't work 24-7. <laughs> like, I have to sleep. And that's the rest. My brain doesn't work that way. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's kind of unfortunate that way. What made you want to start writing and doing art in the first place? And when did you get started? You mentioned you were you were pretty young when you started, but yeah. When so did you I, get started, and what made you want to start getting that? I started with both of them when I was I was probably in middle school I took a art class like I was just always into it I don't like I I remember in like first grade I thought I invented a color of purple and pink together and I didn't it was periwinkle and I was like so excited and I was in that just sort of I just like I'm a genius I can draw I can, I can do colors and stuff like that and um in sixth grade we took a creative writing and they told us we read the giver and then we um, we're told to complete the story and I did and then we did birds which was like sort of depressing and then they were like finish the story and I did and my teacher was like you are very good at this and you should be a writer when you're older and of course I'm like in sixth grade like what is that 11 12 and I'm like okay sure it's awesome you know a child so where were you you were saying you were in the creative writing at sixth grade right sixth grade yep and my teacher um was like you should definitely be a writer when you're older and i just didn't really um grasp or understand what they were saying so i was like sure it was very offhanded um and then just as i grew older um like i was good at both but it, it just sort of you know life tends to tell you that you need to get a job, you need to be go in higher education, you need to get a diploma, you need to, you know, the daily grind and participate in society. And so I let all of that go. I stopped writing and doing art for almost 10 years to 15 years, like not really like offhandedly here and there, but nothing serious. And then I just at uh, one day, I was just so burnt out. Um, from my skills of feeling like they weren't being used or utilized for something I love and I felt caged and I felt like um I could do something more I could do something better for the world and for myself so I started picking up the art again and I started writing again and it was it was me choosing my freedom essentially so really digging in and and diving headfirst into this, I realized that all of that time, effort, and energy into any company <laughs> was profiting them more, and it would 
it it felt like accomplished for me in certain areas, but it felt also mostly empty. Like I would get awards or I would get a pat on the back and doing such a great job, but it wasn't fulfilling for me. So um, what really jump started it was me wanting to be free, the freedom of it. And so that's, so I never stopped. I never looked back ever. Awesome. So you do this full time then? Um, right now I do only because I, um, because medically I can't work right now because of some issues uh, that I ran into. But I technically would have a full time job if I could be working right now um, and also be doing this. So my book one and book two were all done and self published while working 40 hour job. Yeah. And then I was like, yeah, I like never really slept because <laughs> I didn't want to. <laughs> yeah, hey, I totally get it. Like on my lunch break, I would be writing a chapter and then I'd have to stop or I'd wake up an hour early. I'm just your deadbeat tired, but um, it's temporary. You know, that tired is temporary because the success and fulfillment you get from it, from being, you know, doing something like this is is almost worth everything you know yeah i definitely can uh, i can relate to that um okay so you mentioned you've got a fourth book on the way what other plans do you have what art are you working on what's your future plans with all of that so right now um let's see here so i have a, an author signing on october 21st in Plymouth meeting pennsylvania i have special editions um, that I'm making specifically for that author signing. I also just started a project with um, Undisputed Films and Sir Marco Robinson that we're actually going to be co-producing a rendition movie that is going to be completely funded by um, the populace. So like the readers and everything. It's going to be crowdfunding, grants. It's None of the money is going to come from the big wigs. We're going to make a movie of a rendition of book one, um, except that it's the beginning, which I cannot express how much excitement I have for that. I mean, I can, but it's just a fraction of what I really feel. And then um, we're doing the movie, and then the audiobook's coming at the end of the year, and then book three should be out at the end of the year as well. So I have a lot going on with it. When it comes to art, it's, it's more of going out and doing local like fairs and local um markets and stuff like that so my father-in-law his his tiktok handle is big daddy ray he does he's huge in the skate world and he has this event in philadelphia in the early november um i think it's the 9th and the 10th so i'm gonna actually be out in the skate um skateplex selling some of my art to the skaters and they come from all over the country like all over the country so i'm excited wow you are really busy you're doing a lot that's awesome yeah. it's like a lot but it's spaced out you know what i mean so it's not over yeah it's, <laughs> it's not like all on top of each other where you're going from one thing to the other <laughs> yeah i don't want to hate myself it's very important that i line things up for my future self in a couple of months or projects but it's also very important that I don't overlap them too much because I will uh, burn myself out and I'll just be pissed at myself. Like, who am I going to be angry at? Myself. Like, that's it. You know? yeah. So I, I try to be careful. I, I can understand that. Uh, all right. Well, I'm gonna f or we're going to finish this out with the lightning round questions. I just like to do these as a little fun cap to, at the end of the interviews just to kind of you know, wrap it all up and then I'll give you a final word and you can pr plug your, your websites and where everybody can find your book and all that. And then we'll go from there. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. All right. So we're going to start off the lightning round. Just answer as quick as you can. Okay. What's your favorite food? <laughs> My favorite food is pizza. Hands down. Pizza. Okay. I hear that one a lot. <laughs> What's your least favorite food? Um, cilantro. I hate cilantro. Can't stand it on anything. Oh, absolutely not. Mm -mm. Okay, cilantro. Okay. What's your favorite color? Um, turquoise. Turquoise. And your least favorite color? 
Yellow. I don't like yellow. Mm -mm. I don't like yellow. Okay. Like yellow, your... I mean like bright, bright yellow. Like bright, bright yellow. Like golden is totally fine. Sunflower is totally fine. But bright, bright yellow, absolutely. <laughs> okay. I can see that, yeah. <laughs> um, what's a favorite thing to wear on a cold day? I have um, leg warmers that I wear. So when I have my jeans and my boots on and I have leg warmers that I get out of just when I feel a little feisty. And I absolutely love wearing those. Like it really makes a whole mood for me. I love them. Awesome. That's cool. Okay. So what is something that you have always wanted? A horse. A what? A, a horse. An elephant. A horse. Okay. <laughs> a giraffe. Oddly, I hear that one a lot too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what's your favorite thing that you currently own? Oh, um, my record player. I just got it from my, I inherited it from my dad. And I have vinyl records from him from the 60s and 70s. Okay. And I'm really a fan. Like, they're great. <laughs> they're yeah. really great. They're good stuff. Yeah. That, that era of music is some good music. <laughs> yeah, like, really, really good. And, like, there was bands I never heard of before, but they sound great. And I'm like, what? In what world is this? <laughs> So, if you could have one superpower, what would it be and why? Ooh. One superpower. I wish that that's a hard one. And it has to do with animals. Because I don't really want a superpower. Because they all are very, like, I don't, like, you know, everyone's like, I want to fly, but I'm afraid of heights. <laughs> and like okay. i want to live forever but you're gonna be alone and miserable and you know and honestly everyone you love is gonna die you know like i don't want any of those the only thing would be with animals is i wish i could get all of the animals in a protective area that were like going extinct because humans suck sometimes and uh, like i want to just protect the animals and i just don't know how or like never ending food for the homeless dogs or something. You know what I mean? Like something crazy. <laughs> something like that. Being able to never ending well, never ending food can have a lot of applications. So Yeah, it can. <laughs> I know. And then we'll run out of like grain or something. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I All I right. haven't really thought this through. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. All right, so go ahead and tell us where can we find all of your books and art? Where can we find those? Sure. So my books are located on RebeccaHeight.com and my art is at bhcreations.online. My um, Instagram handle is height underscore bristow underscore revolution. And my TikTok handle is the exalted peacock. Exalted peacock. All right. <laughs> So I want to thank you, Rebecca, for taking the time to uh, to be here today. Uh, it was a, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah.